And now, podcasting from the great city of Anchorage, Alaska, in the largest state in the country, this is the Upper One Podcast with your hosts, Scott and Eric. All right, Eric, we are back, and I think we're losing count on these episodes. Hey, I'm just glad that we're able to be back. Hope well, everybody's being safe and healthy out there. You know, we got somebody new today. Yeah, in our family, we consider him the genius of the family, so this is going to be interesting. <laughs> Don't fall out of your chair over there. <laughs> he, he's, he's like the smartest one in our family, I, I swear And he's God, the most he technical talker, too. I think that oh. somebody else in the house might disagree with you, but... <laughs> Eric, you want to introduce... All right, everybody, give a warm welcome to uh, my brother-in-law, Mr. Tim Fahey. The person he's talking about is probably Rhonda that you guys have heard on a couple of the other shows, but they battle on these uh, phone games, you know, words with friends and things like that. and Trivia crack. Something like that, yeah. Uh, Tim, maybe you can <laughs> relay some of these games you guys get involved in, and my wife's like, that sucker's beating me. No, they're just simple word game that uh, we go back and forth on, although she frequently... Oh, almost always beats me at one and I almost always beat her at the other one so okay he's being nice now well at least you're not playing that golf class that Eric and I are playing are you that's a stupid game (laughs) are you gonna make it through this Tim you'll never (laughs) you'll never win any money playing virtual golf well I'm not trying to win money I just want my trophies and then it seems like I build up and then I go back down I'll build up a few, and then I'll go further back down. It seems like I'm on a backwards trail here. That last episode, we did a few impersonations on a couple of our favorite wrestlers. and or At least attempted. Yeah, it was an attempt. It wasn't good. But we got Tim here, and Tim has... Some stories I think you can tell about a few of these wrestlers. Well, I know that you would be interested in these stories because you're the wrestling fanatic. Yeah. Before we moved to Alaska, we lived in a town in Florida called Largo. And there was a World Gym that was right down the road from where we lived. And as it happened, World Gym was owned in part by, I believe, Sylvester Stallone and a couple of other big name Probably Mr. People. T, maybe. The uh, some celebrities together. owned the franchise or the name, and they were franchising it out. As it happened in the area that we lived in, there were several pro wrestlers that lived in the area, including Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, Randy Savage. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. Didn't mean to interrupt you there. <laughs> the... Uh, Big Show, before he was Big Show, they called him the Giant. Um, Bushwhackers, some old school guys that were there, and uh, they used to go to the gym and work out. There were many times that we'd go down there and we would see them come in. Actually, Big Show had this little tiny car. Now, I don't even know how he got into it. He'd pull up, park in the front, unfold himself out of that little car, and duck as he walked in the doorway. The first time I saw Hulk Hogan, he was living down on uh, in one of the beach communities. Clearwater? No, it wasn't in Clearwater. He lived down uh, in a place called Madeira Beach at the time. And um, I worked for a grocery chain down there. And he came into the store shopping and standing up at the customer service counter, I could see his head above the shelves all the way around the store. (laughs) And some of the employees were like, oh, that's Hulk Hogan. You know, I'm like, leave him alone. (laughs) He's shopping. Just a customer right now, people. And uh, he usually would come in late but he would just load up his cart with groceries and check out and he was just a regular person at, at that point um, he did not even act anything like his persona in the ring at a different store that i worked at i had some of my part-time clerks that worked for me that night they came in hey they said macho man's in here and i said who the hell is macho man what i didn't, I didn't oh, know who he was no you don't know who Macho Man is? And they went over and they picked up one of the wrestling magazines and brought it over and showed it to me and then pointed it at the guy. And he was in there shopping. He had on a tank top, cut off shorts, flip flops. Oh. Did he have his bandana on with his he sunglasses? He did not have his bandana oh. on. He had hair at the time. How could you? <laughs> and you just took away my whole thing where I was going with that when you said he had hair at the time. He's walking through with this tall, thin woman who happened to be Miss Elizabeth. Whoa. Oh, yeah. They, they and were, they yeah. just loaded up groceries, and they went over, and they asked him for an autograph, and they told him their name was Tim. And he says, to Tim. And they came over and gave me the magazine that he had autographed, and I asked, which one of you paid for this? <laughs> That's Tim. Hey, it's all about the money, baby. You're the manager of the store. Hey, 
It costs the store money. Hey, I want my money. <laughs> there was one time when uh, my wife went down to the gym one day and Hulk Hogan came in and she was on the Stairmaster. And he came in and he got on the Stairmaster right next to her. And she looked over at him and he looked over and they were going. And they were going. And he kept going. And she kept going. <laughs> and he looked over at her and she says, I'm not getting off until you do. And he just kind of chuckled and kept on walking. Finally, he stopped and then she did. And she says, I was so tired. Then another time, she's such an opportunist. She was in there one day, day during the day, and there was a blonde woman in there working out. They were like the only two women in there, so they started working out together. And afterwards, she said, hey, you know, a lot of my friends, they don't like to work out. And she says, you seem to like come in here. And they had a good conversation. Turns out it's Hulk Hogan's wife. Oh. Back then, that was Linda. Right? And gave my wife her unlisted home phone number Uh-oh. and said, if you Party. ever want to work out, give me a call. She never called her. And I wow. cannot believe that I was so mad. I said, we could be going over to Hulk Hogan's house for barbecues. Oh, my <laughs> Lord. Ooh, that kills yeah. me. <laughs> I remember one day when she came home, she had gone to the store, had turned down that road, and as she was driving, by she saw that he was there and she came home and she said quick get in the car let's go and we drove back to the gym they weren't even open but he was there because the owner let him come in when they weren't open and his customized dodge viper was parked in the back parking lot he had bought that viper and sent it to california to be customized wow painted red and yellow red and yellow it was red when he bought it but he had it repainted red and yellow and all of the chrome emblems and everything were gold plated and the interior was all red and yellow leather and it was the gaudiest looking thing you ever saw but it belonged to hulk hogan so what are you gonna say (laughs) oh that's beautiful man that is beautiful But that's my brush with fame. I just cannot believe that my sister ruined that for you. You could have been barbecuing. Hobnobbing with Hulk Hogan. At Hulk Hogan's house. Uh, What? I'd have divorced her. (laughs) I do believe I would have. When I was younger, I went to a boys camp down there in Brooksville, Florida. And Gary Orndorff was one of the counselors at that camp. That's right. Which was Paul Orndorff's Brother. brother. Yep. Why there was a community of them there, I just don't know. But Well, I, I think at that time, a lot of them were from Florida. And there was a, you know, back then it was all territorial stuff, you know, before the 80s and all that hit yeah. when, when the WWF got big. So there was all territorials. They would go back and forth. And Hogan, Hogan used to actually go up and wrestle in Minneapolis before he even came to the WWE. So, he you know, that was all a whole lot of things. The big show, and what's cool about him is he had the same... Problem with that pituitary gland that Andre the Giant did. If it inflames itself or something, you grow huge. And oh, he the, grew huge. Well, the only difference is, is Andre the Giant didn't do anything with it. The Big Show, who his real name is Paul White, he had it removed, so he quit growing. The Big Show is one of my favorite guys, too. I think you love them all. Hey, I, I, I've hey, seen all you know the what? posters hey, you've made. I've hey, seen you, you were take, a part of that. I, I remember you taking my son to go see him, and I, I think instead of babysitting Christopher, he was babysitting I me. I was babysitting Scott. No, we had fun that day. It was we, a good we had time. fun, it but was uh, a good time. Yes, but... I, I I absolutely love my wrestling because it's the male version of a soap opera. <laughs> so you know what? Instead of sitting and watching these good boo- way to look at it, watching these girls and guys boohoo over there relationships i just watch guys in tights dance around the ring with each other there you go there you go (laughs) so what do you think about that tim guys in tights dancing around the ring (laughs) well in their underwear tights whatever whatever you want to call it you know might as well just be in their underwear you know if you can get away with it and make a lot of money at it i'd do it and people are entertained (laughs) i'm sorry i just had a bad vision in my head the bushwhackers the bushwhackers licking each other's underarms no no, my brother-in-law he said man he'd do it no oh no (laughs) (laughs) well we got another visitor in here what do you think Rhonda? would you watch tim wrestle if if he could make a lot of money wrestling in tights (laughs) yeah there's no answer for that she Anyhow, wow, that was exciting. All right, Tim, so whatever happened to that magazine? I'm not really sure what happened to it. I don't remember if I kept it or if one of the the guys kept it, but... Um, Did you put I, it back on, on the shelf? I, it, it may have gone back on the shelf. <laughs> so which, some... <laughs> which, and if somebody purchased that and it had the Macho Man's autograph in it, to and their Tim. name was Tim. To Tim. <laughs> Maybe Tim bought know. it. 
It would be worth some money to somebody named Tim. <laughs> It'd maybe. be worth a lot to somebody to do. I don't yeah. know. You know, it's just, I can't remember. It was a long time ago. There are a couple more occasions where uh, I got to see Hulk Hogan or his wife when they moved to um, Clearwater. Clearwater. Actually, it was a little town that was adjacent to Clearwater, and they they bought an old house that was built back in the early 1920s, I want to say, and it really needed a lot of renovation. And um, the people, that was a historic building. The historical society in that town didn't want them to do anything. They wanted to tear the house down and, and rebuild it. And the historical society was afraid this big said flashy no. wrestler was going to build this big glass and metal monstrosity right in the middle of their historic district. Hulk's wife, Linda, hired a, an architect. He actually looked at the house and he designed a home that had the same architectural style so that on the outside it would match the rest of the homes that were in the area. And when she went and presented that to the Historical Society and the, the Building Commission, they said, that's what you want to build? They didn't understand. She said, well, that's why we wanted the house. We liked the way it looked. We don't want to change the area and build something that doesn't fit in there. So they okayed it, and they built a house that looked almost identical on the outside, but had all the modern conveniences inside, you know, updated wiring and plumbing and, and all that stuff. But It was outside of Clearwater, though, right? It was in a little town called Bel Air. They weren't Scientologists, were they? No, they weren't Scientologists. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> and they updated the house to where inside it was all up to date, and it still had the old... that. Those touches oh, that yep. made it look like it was from that era. Gotcha. But it nice. had all modern wiring and all plumbing fixtures and things like that. So it was, it was all up to code, and it would um, make it sit with the historical society. Sit with in the that, historical in society time, yeah. because of what they they did. And I mean, they, you know, the the driveway was made out of pavers. It wasn't board cement. And, Things like that. Yeah. So it was, That's cool. Yeah. You know, because I, I, I like some of them older style homes, you know. I, I Being a carpenter, I enjoy yeah. some of that it'd, old it'd be cool. school look, you it'd, know. It'd be cool to go everything. down there and see if that house is still there. Or I, I don't know if they still own it because I know I know he lives in Clearwater. I don't think they own that one. She might live there. But no, she, sure. lives in, she lives in L.A. She's, okay. she's all the way across the country with that. Yeah, they that probably, big fiasco they had to go through. but Probably yeah. sold it. But, um, yeah, so another store that I worked in was close by that area. And um, I remember I walked up to the customer service counter, and I saw his wife walking out of the store, and one of the bag boys was taking the, the groceries back. And I said, what's going on? And they said she didn't have any way to pay. So she left, and we're going to hold her groceries for her. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I said, do you know who that woman is? And they're like, no. And I said, well, that's Hulk Hogan's wife. Why didn't anybody call me? What, who, who decided to make that decision to, to make her leave without taking this $200 order of groceries out of here? Oh, my God. Fifteen minutes later. This big black Mercedes pulls up and stops right in the fire lane in front of the store. And this big, tall, blonde-haired man walks into the store and says, Where's my groceries? Who do I pay for them? And it was Hulk Hogan. Oh, my God. And I <laughs> grabbed the first kid I saw and said, Run back there and grab that cart right now. And I don't care if he says he doesn't want help, you go put it in the car for him. <laughs> All right. God, oh, man. man. I think I'd have been looking for that cashier and saying, hey. My brush is with fame. <laughs> of course, I don't know. Knowing Tim, if Tim would have been in that situation, he'd have happened to run a register that day. He'd have probably done the same thing, even though he knows who she is. You ain't got no money. You ain't got no groceries. <laughs> no. If I'd have been up front and they'd have asked me, I'd have said, Go ahead and take them. 
and just come back with the receipt. Well, you'll, you'll come back and pay, receipt, right? Yeah. She would have come back. Oh yeah. Or he'd oh, have yeah. come back and give me a check, whatever. Yeah. Give me my groceries, brother. He might have invited me to a barbecue. Ah, there you go. Who then, knows? There you, you go. Know? He would have had a second invite to be able to go yeah. barbecue with well Hogan. You know, with with all this stuff that's going on, that that is uh, that that just puts makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up, knowing that you know you got to meet basically meet my. Wrestling idol. Yeah. Work out with him. Yeah. I didn't ever work out. Lania did. But, uh, you know, with, with what's going on today, you know, they were, both of y'all being from Florida, and you both are Buccaneers fans, you know that they were supposed to hold. Ooh, yeah. They were supposed to hold WrestleMania at Raymond James Stadium this year, but because of everything that's going on, they changed their plans, and they moved it to their performance center in Orlando. So they filmed... The entire WrestleMania show in two days. They filmed it over Saturday and Sunday and broadcast it on the, the WWE Network without any fans there. He, uh, Rob Gronkowski hosted it. He got to stand up and talk on the mic and dance with his fancy glasses on and stuff. He had to find something else to do to make some yeah. money. So, you know, they, they've always been a big production when it comes to those shows, but they, they held that uh, WrestleMania in the Performance Center in Orlando. And I just was told by Rhonda, she brought it up. If you're not an essential business, you're not supposed to be out and about, you know, you know unless you're going to the grocery store, right? And go, yeah, going to the, exactly. the gas pump. It's been reported on ESPN that the WWE has been deemed an essential business in you Florida. you got to be kidding me. And it will resume its live shows. <laughs> I've heard inklings of this over the weekend. I think they're going to just film their live shows, you know, the Raw and SmackDown. I think they're just going to film them. But the WWE was deemed an essential business in Florida. Orange County Mayor Jerry Demings said Monday, allowing the company to resume live television shows from its Orlando training facility and Full Sail University in Winter Park. Is he back up for a re-election? Probably. <laughs> you, know. you know, it's funny because there's a lot of people in this country that really don't give a rat's behind about sports at all. But so much of our culture revolves around following sports. And Hollywood. And Hollywood. Yep. That when we don't have them, people are really starting to... Um, Go stir crazy. Yes, exactly. That's the word. It's, a, you know, some people, all they want to do is sit and watch sports. And I can relate to that. I mean, I love you know, my NASCAR. I love my baseball. I love my football. You know, I. And when they totally canceled everything, I mean, as far as even going as far as canceling the Summer Olympics, uh, there's a, a sporting event there where people have trained for a good part of their lives well, to participate. Every in. four years, they train for the next Olympics. And. Now they may not have that opportunity because it may be totally canceled and not be held again for four years. And some of those people may just, you know, their dream is not going to yeah. be fulfilled. I think I heard that they put it off. They, they have put they're it gonna off They're going to suspend it a year. Uh, they're they're suspending summer. it a year. And, you know, depending on how things go, that could change. But as of right now, it's just delayed one year. So yeah. then they'll, so you know, we'll, then they'll get back on Olympics will be next year, 2021. Yeah. That was a, uh, that was some pretty dang good stories. That's every time I, you know, I've met, I've met a few wrestlers in my time. I think Eric and Chris and I, when we went to that last show, we got to meet a couple of them and we got a few autographs. And I think, Kofi Kingston even throw us a couple of he threw us a headband and a wristband. Yeah, Chris so, still has his. I have my wristband, and then I've also met a few previous to that. I think it was two thousand four because that was one of the years that the Patriots were in the Super Bowl. I met John Cena that year. Like I said I, I, I miss the days back then. You know, I used to have a good time. Tim and I used to have a blast. Uh, Tim used to own a boat when I was. Uh, I was still a teenager at the time, but we'd go hydrosliding up and up and down the intercoastal, and had a great time. You remember <laughs> that time? You and my brother and me, and we went and we had that inner tube. 
we had a, just an inner tube with a rope tied around it. And they had this big sightseeing boat that was like a paddle wheeler. <laughs> and I was on the tube. My brother was driving the boat. And Eric was your flagger watching And he you. went behind that boat, and I hit the wake. <laughs> and I, that tube flew up in the air. I don't even know how high it went. And when it came back down, it hit so hard, it knocked the wind out of me. <laughs> and I... And then hit the next wave and bounced up again, and I let go, and I'm, I don't even know. You know, crash it, test dummy. It'd be great if they had Tim a could fly bitty. that day. And I ended up hitting the water. I think they came around thinking that I was knocked out or something. <laughs> <laughs> All we know is Tim could fly that day, because <laughs> he went flying. <laughs> oh my goodness! We had a lot of fun, though. Yeah. It was a good time. And then I couldn't believe that. Then when they moved from Florida up to here, Tim moved up here with my niece. My sister was left back there, and she finished up what she had to finish up with her work and uh, getting the house sold and packing up the last little bit of stuff to send up. Well, they bring the hydroslide up here, and I owned a riverboat, so they thought, here, you can have it. They didn't realize I had a jet foot, man. Trying to pull somebody behind that boat with a a jet motor just drug the back end of my boat around, you know? So we gave it to some friends that uh, we used to camp up on Nancy Lake with all the time. And I hadn't ridden the thing in years. They could not figure out how to get up on it. So, of course, me sitting around one day and had a few beers said, I'll show you how to do it, you know? Went out there. I hit that water. That water was so cold, man. I was like, go. Just go. I hadn't ridden the thing in probably 10 years, 15 years. <laughs> Boom. Right up. I got. I was right up and going. They drug me around Nancy Lake trying to spin me in donuts and everything. I was not letting go. <laughs> it's like riding a bike. <laughs> man, that water was too cold. I wasn't going back down. <laughs> but yeah. it, was, it was a good time. I but, heard... Uh, the other morning I was going to work and I heard the, the radio DJs talking about going, no, uh, water skiing. They actually were talking about um, skiing in the lake around uh, Disney World. The guy was back there behind the boat on the skis. And just as, and it was one of the people that works there at one of the hotels. And it's just as they're going, they take off and they say, oh, by the way, watch out for the alligators. And he's like, what? <laughs> Too late, right? He's on the skis. And he says, I was so scared. I was looking around all the, over the place for alligators. He was worried more about the alligators than <laughs> skiing on the water. Oh my. <laughs> but if there's a body of water in Florida, there's it's alligator. probably got an alligator. Oh, yeah. Right so, yep, I, man, the, sto- the things I can remember growing up. 2000. At Seminole Park. We're on the swing set. There's alligators just sunning themselves right on the edge of the lake, you know, you know, maybe 20 yards away, 30 yards away. Now my, and we're on the swing set. My oldest son, when he graduated in 2014, we went down there for his graduation. The little community that his mother and stepfather, where they lived in, has got its own private golf course. And, you know, just because I'd never seen one out in the open, they see the alligators down on a golf course all the time. So we went down there, and sure enough, I mean, it wasn't up you know, up on the green or up on the walkway or nothing anywhere, but we could see him swimming around and it was cool. But there was a, somewhere right there in Kissimmee that that place that he was doing his graduation, they had a, a little cage. And so the guy came out and had little, you know, eight or 10 inch baby alligators and he let us pet them. And so that was my first ever experience. That was cool. I, I enjoyed my time in Florida. Yeah. Cause yeah. I got to see my favorite racetrack. Oh, Daytona. I got to go on the tour, and I got a picture in the victory I lane. I was at the 92 Daytona who, 500. Who, who won that? Davy Allison. Who came in second? If you ain't first, <laughs> you're, you're the last. Second place is the first loser? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, that was a lot of fun having Tim sit in with us, tell some stories. I don't think he was expecting to have this much fun, so I definitely can guarantee he will be back. Well, I sure hope so. I enjoy... Uh, 
listening to his stories, even though I've heard him since I was 13 years old. He's got some great stories, and uh, he and I have created some great stories. You know, I, I don't know if it's so much the story, but it's how he tells it. Oh, yeah, he's he's just, you know, I, I told <laughs> That's you. That's the witty charm. I told you you would enjoy having him sit well, in Well, anyways, there. Tim, thank you. We can't wait till you come back. We're going to sign this podcast off by continuing to tell our first responders and our medical staff, thank you, along with, as a Teamster, truck drivers that keep the stuff rolling into the grocery stores for y'all. Bringing in my teepee. Anyways, I'm Scott. That's Eric, trying to keep a straight face from a gloomy, rainy day at the Chugach Foothills in Anchorage, Alaska, signing off on this episode of the Upper One Podcast. We'll see y'all next time.